Bernou attack claims suicide bomber leaves two injured. Kajura village ravaged by gunmen, 87 abducted. Nationwide strike across Nigerian universities as non-academic staff unite in protest. On the international scene, Gaza on the brink as United Nations warns of imminent famine amidst hospital raid. Hello again and welcome to the news update at this hour on Trust Television. I am Aisha Salihu. Thank you so much for joining us. And on the news in full, I will begin with a security update. The police in Barunu State on Monday confirmed that a suicide bomber injured two persons in the local government area of the state. The command's public relations officer, ASP Daso Nahum, who confirmed the incident on Monday, said it occurred at about 8 p.m. on Sunday when Muslim faithful were observing their night prayers. Nahum said the male suicide bomber, who was suspected to be heading to the mosque, detonated the improvised explosive device close to the roundabout, killing himself. He added that two passers-by who were wounded by the explosive were immediately rushed to a nearby hospital for treatment. According to him, a combined team of security personnel were immediately deployed to the scene of the incident to restore normalcy. The spokesman urged people to heighten their level of vigilance especially during this period of Ramadan, when most faithful are observing late-night prayers. Still on security matters, terrorists on Sunday night kidnapped 87 people after launching a fresh attack on the Kajuru Station community in Kajuru local government area of Kaduna State. A member of the Kajuru Station youth, Harisu Dari, confirmed the incident on Monday in Kaduna. Harisu said the terrorists also broke into some shops and stole food items and other valuables. He said they invaded the village around 10 p.m. The attack came barely two days after 15 women and a man were abducted in the Dogo Noma community of the same local government. Kajuru and Chikun local governments had been, had in the past two weeks become the hotbed of kidnapping causing tension in the state. And earlier, we spoke to Mohammed Ibrahim Yaba, who is Daily Trust correspondent in Kaduna, and he gave us an update on the attack. Let's have a listen. Uh, the incident happened uh, uh, at the early, uh, that, was, that was late last night uh, on Sunday, according to the community leader. Uh, the incident happened uh, uh, around 10.30 p.m. at Sankati and Aguba village under uh, Pupana district of uh, Kaduna, local community, uh, local community area of Kaduna city, where uh, the bandits were said to have uh, in large number had invaded the community and abducted 86, comp 86 villagers, comprising of wo uh, women, housewives, uh, men, and youth residing in that community. And, and since the incident happened, we understand that most of the villagers are fleeing the community to safer, to, to neighboring safer communities for, uh, for, for fear of the unknown. Because presently, as we are talking, and no, no, there was no information about the whereabouts of those abducted in, in, in the community and the people were said to be afraid. They don't even know which community will be the next uh, target for, for the suspected bandits who have been terrorizing the community throughout this uh, week. Mm. Thank you so much for that response, Mohammed Ibrahim. I was going to ask you the general mood of the people across the volatile region until you mentioned uh, the villagers are fleeing the community. But apart from them fleeing the community and the fear, what else is the general mood in the area? Well, actually, there is tension in the community there because I just spoke with uh, one of the community leaders who confirmed to me that there was tension. They don't, they are, the, the people don't even know what is happening and they don't know where to take their complaint to because... Uh, since the incident of this series of uh, abduction within the week in the in the area, uh, the only thing they hear from the security agency or the government is that they we are they are, they are doing their best, but yet the people are not feeling safe. Yet the people are complaining that they don't even know where to run to. Uh, that this is the mood um, presently in the community. The, the people are expecting a Messiah to appear. Maybe it's by by by. But even though the government, like I said earlier, uh, I spoke with the police organization officer ASP. Um, and Hassan, who confirmed the incident, but said that 
they are they they are still yet not uh, to, to to acquire the accurate number of people abducted due to poor network in in in, in the area. But you confirmed that yes, there was an incident, and yet that and that uh, the, the police command have deployed special squads to the community to protect and also to see the possibility of working those abducted. But presently. The people are confused. They don't even know where to go, and, and they don't know what is happening. Because even yesterday, uh, about 14 people were, were were kidnapped. The day before, about uh, seven uh, females, uh, one person was killed in, in the same local government. So the people don't even know what is happening. Uh, and um, but 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 the, the security agencies are, are always assuring them that they are doing their best to protect life and property, not only in the community but also across the state. More on the insecurity in Kaduna State. The Chief of Defense Staff, Christopher Musa, says efforts are in place to rescue the Kuriga school children and others kidnapped by bandits and other terrorists across the country. The Defense Chief gave the assurance when he visited Kaduna State to commiserate with the government and the people of the state over the unfortunate incident at Kuriga from Kaduna. Trustee Vez Bella Musa completes the story. For almost two weeks now, kidnapped school children of Kuriga are still in the hands of their abductors, with calls from within and outside Kaduna State intensifying for their rescue. This necessitated this visit by the Chief of Defense Staff to Kaduna, where he assured of commitment to rescue the children safely. And we are working tirelessly to ensure one will secure the state, the country secure the citizens, most especially to be able to free the abducted ones, both the school children and all the other ones that have been adopted. Troops are coming and we're getting more troops. We're taking more action to ensure that we safeguard, we bring them out as quickly as possible. These are children, the leaders of tomorrow. We will not allow them to grow with this trauma. Let them not feel that they've been neglected. But you, the parents, we know you have been spending sleepless nights. We equally are doing the same. We are with you in this. I will continue to be with this. The city has also vows to bring to book elements causing mayhem in the country. For those individuals that have sworn that there will be no peace, they will have no peace. We will ensure that we fo follow them up wherever they are. And those ones that are sponsoring them and encouraging them to do the same, for their own good, they should stop. The state cannot be put under control to anybody. The state is under the, 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 the state government. And we will ensure that anybody who stands in the way of getting peace in the state and in Nigeria is brought to book. Responding, the governor of Kaduna State Obasani said the government will not relent until the children are reunited with their families. We are also working with, also with, with other volunteers, just like uh, the families of the, of the uh, children to ensure that uh, they are given psychosocial support because we know the level of trauma they are facing at this critical time because we know what it means for a child to be abducted from school. At the end of the meeting, the Chief of Defense Staff had a closed-door meeting with members of Koriga community. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. Still on security matters, following last week's killing of 16 soldiers and officers at Okwama community in Delta State, troops of the Nigerian Army have invaded Igbomoturu community in southern Ijo, local government area of Bayelsa State, raising houses and allegedly killing about 11 people. Soldiers and five gunboats reportedly stormed the community, raising houses suspected to be the hideout of a militant leader said to be involved in the killing of the military men who were on rescue mission in Delta State. The deceased officers and soldiers were, 181, were of 181 amphibious battalion of Bomadi local government area of Delta. Chief of Defense Staff General Christopher Musa had directed the immediate investigation and arrest of those involved in the heinous crime Days after the order, residents of Okwama community fled to neighboring Ugeli for fear of a reprisal by soldiers. Houses were burned in Okwama at the weekend 
and after that, soldiers stormed neighboring Bayelsa. A source said immediately the troops stormed the Bayelsa community. They opened fire on some residents, relaxing at the jetty before proceeding to set ablaze the three buildings suspected to be the hideout of the said militant leader. And I'm away from security matters and now to labor matters. The University of Abuja chapter of the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities and the Non-Academic Staff Union of Educational and Associated Institutions voiced their discontent with the federal government's alleged continuous disregard for issues bothering on the unions. At the commencement of a seven-day warning strike, as directed by the national body, unions are demanding that the federal government should address issues raised in various agreements between them and the government. Trustee Ves Habiba Tajai has more. The leadership of Sanu and Nasu at the University of Abuja commenced a seven-day warning strike on Monday, March 18th, following through on their earlier threats and ultimatum to the Nigerian government. Their grievances include the non-payment of withheld salaries, the need for a review of the Union 2009 Act and other present issues. Students at the university expressed their concern who are at the receiving end of the strike voiced their concerns as academic activities grind to a halt. Normally there is no free flow of activities in the school. Well, for instance, those people that were, those of us that are coming from many campus, the shuttles were all a little bit dark and a bit harder for us because we are unable to reach the permanent site on time because of this. And we are even, they are even dropping us at the gate. And it is a long distance that you take you from the gate to the main lecture halls in this class. And there are a lot of information about the, some lectures that have been cancelled. No, 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 the information was not official, but some lectures are not even holding. So some lectures are not even in school. The schools are not taking place. The one the non-academic staffs are in charge of, it's no, nothing is actually functioning well. Students, University of Abuja, Sanu and Nasu officials, reiterated the importance of their roles in ensuring the smooth operation of universities and called on the federal government to address their needs promptly, urging the government to recognize their contributions to the education sector. In 2022, we embarked on a strike based on these issues and other matters, and our salaries were suspended or were withheld for four months. This current administration, led by Bola Tinubu, graciously approved and agreed that four months, our four months with S salaries be paid to us in October 2023. Five months down the line, our counterparts in ASU have been paid, while the non-teaching staff in the university has been treated with disdain and ignominy. We are not paid, despite the directive of Mr. President. And we felt this is a disregard to a presidential directive and is also aimed at undermining the industrial harmony we've enjoyed in Nigeria University since August 2022. This is not because we want to come on the streets. If our demands are attended to, there will be no need to be in here. But we have, and to make you know that the Jack of Nasu and Sanu are peaceful and law-abiding citizens. We held a memorandum of uh, understanding, memorandum of action, memorandum of implementation, and we still have memorandum of nothing has come. So whose faults are we seeing? Are we being insensitive here? The answer is no. We want them to know that we are also important and they should take our demands serious. Despite acknowledging the disruption caused by the strike, the unions emphasize the need for an urgent response from the government to their demands, highlighting the necessity of fair treatment and recognition for their vital role in the education sector. Habibat Ajayi, Trust TV News, Abuja. Similarly, the leaderships of the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities and the Non-Academic Staff Union on Monday shut down the Senate building of the Bayero University, Kano, as they embarked on a seven-day warning strike. The strike, which is in line with calls from the national body, followed unmet demands of the association by the federal government. 
The chairman of the BUK branch, Mustafa Aminu, reiterated that part of the issues that called for the strike action are renegotiation of the 2009 agreement, including the issue of 25-35% of salary increment, minimum wage arrears, and the issue of the 50 billion naira the government has promised to give as earned allowances. He said if nothing is done after the seven-day warning strike, then a total and indefinite strike will be declared. He therefore warned that no union member should give room for any skeletal services in their respective departments or units. The Nigeria Data Protection Commission has ordered a full-scale investigation into allegations of unauthorized access to the personnel to the personal data of enrollees in the database of the National Identity Management Commission. A statement by the NPDC Head of Legal Enforcement and Regulations, Babatunde Bamikboye, on Monday, said the investigation is a further regulatory measure to be taken by the Commission in the wake of public concerns over reports of illegal access to personal data of enrollees by a, shadow, a shadowy entity called expressverify.com. It would be recalled that before now, NDPC has been engaging with NIMC on fostering adequacy of data protection. To this end, NDPC said it, that it held a training with relevant officers of NIMC in early February 2024 as a measure being put in place by the federal government to ensure data privacy and protection. The Commission said preliminary findings of the investigation should be made public within seven days. You're watching the news update on Trust Television. Still to come. Nigerians decry impact of internet instability occasioned by subsea cables disruption. More news when we return. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us. Now let's take a look at a recap of some of our top stories. You heard that Borneo attack claims suicide bomber leaves to injured. Plus, Kajura village ravaged by gunmen, 87 abducted. And now moving on to more stories. Residents of the Federal Capital Territory have been reacting to the interruptions in internet services across the country following multiple fiber cuts in four subsea cables, including main, o, main one, West African Cable System, African Coast to Europe, and South Atlantic Telecommunications 3. Newell Thompson reports that life has not been the same for residents over the past week as residents and businesses battle with snail speed or completely unavailable internet services. Following multiple fiber cuts in the four subsea cables, 90% of data traffic via submarine were affected, with internet download speeds dropping significantly in 13 African countries. This has negatively impacted businesses and individual lives in no small measure. For the last past week, we've been experiencing difficulties in our transaction. The network has not been like it used to be. As a businessman like me, you understand? I can't be able to call my customers to check up on them, to know what they need for me to bring for them, you understand? And also, it has also affected my transfer issue. I can't be able to transfer. And the network has really been frustrating, and also it has been affecting our work, delaying, and most customers causing commotions between the staffs and the workers. I came here to collect my, my ATM card since last week, Friday, and I will not be able to collect it. And I have to come today since around 8 a.m. Obviously a bad experience, because it has brought down many businesses. That's just the truth of the matter. It has brought down many businesses in this country, especially these, these few days. I don't know what, what was the problem, and uh, nobody could do anything about it. Another demoralizing factor in the entire episode is the revelation that service providers may require a minimum of five weeks to pull the damaged cables out of the seabeds, repair, and fix them. Yeah, we are scared because the customers, different complaints, they can't make calls, their data are not loading when they buy data. So, even make calls are problems. The NCC has to do something about it. 
because that's the only way out. Because they can only be people not to give out help. Because all these service providers sometimes, yes, of course, we know that everybody, at least it's not their fault, you understand? But sometimes they should get a backup for all these things. Meanwhile, cable operators had promised to work around the clock to ensure that services are restored in the affected countries within the shortest period of time. No, Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. Justice Emeka Mwite of the Federal High Court, Abuja, has ordered Binance Holdings Limited to provide the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission with comprehensive data or information of all persons from Nigeria trading on its platform. Justice Mwite granted the interim order after ruling on an ex parte motion moved by the EFCC's lawyer, Ekele Ihenacho. The interim order was granted to enable the anti-graft agency unravel the alleged money laundering and terrorism financing on Binance, a cryptocurrency exchange platform. The ex parte motion was brought pursuant to relevant sections of the Economic and Financial Crimes Establishment Act 2004 and Section 15 of the Money Laundering Prevention and Prohibition Act 2002 as amended and the inherent powers of the court. An operative of the EFCC, Hamma Bello, said the data provided would enable the Commission to accomplish its investigation activities, adding that it was in the interest of justice to grant the application as refusal of the request would likely hamper the Commission's investigation. On the international scene, the United Nations Food Agency on Monday warned that Famine is imminent in northern Gaza, where 70% of the remaining population is experiencing catastrophic hunger, adding that a further escalation of the war could push around half of Gaza's total population to the brink of starvation. The alarming report came as Israel faces mountain pressure from even its closest allies to streamline the entry of aid into the Gaza Strip and open more crossings. The European Union's top diplomat said the impending famine was entirely man-made, as starvation is used as a weapon of war. Israeli forces, meanwhile, launched another raid on the Gaza Strip's largest hospital early Monday, saying Hamas militants had regrouped three there and had fired on them from inside the compound, where Palestinian officials say tens of thousands of people have been sheltering. The World Food Programme on Monday released the latest findings of its Integrated Food Security Phase Classification, which says everyone in Gaza is struggling to get enough food, adding that around 677,000 people, nearly a third of the population of 2.3 million, are experiencing the highest level of catastrophic hunger. That, that includes around 210,000 people in the north. And with that, we've come to the end of the news update at this hour. But remember, you can always follow us across all of our social media platforms and also join our YouTube live stream for more news, programs and documentaries. I'm Aisha Salihu. Thank you so much for your time.